Welcome back to the LCS Challengers League promotion tournament. We went the full distance. It didn't look likely woop. at first, <laughs> but we are finally Be here. Woop, woop. Magical's hyped up. <laughs> We're singing Silver Scrapes. Where that's going to come to us eventually, I'm sure. Uh, but beat done. Maryville University, they they took those last two games and they took Baron at 20 minutes in both of their wins. Yeah, it's been some pretty incredible stuff from these last two games from Mariel. This is what we expected from them when we said they were one of the two teams who were almost certainly going to make it into the Challengers League. But the thing that really like made the difference is that they managed to, one, clean up the draft because of those first two games, you know, not great. But the games afterward, top notch, good stuff. We see that AoE won Quacker. It seems that, at least so far, I now cited in chat, no Olaf, no win that Quacker needs a winning matchup in the top side because of how important it is for AoE to play for the Rift Heralds, especially in game three. They had that snowball comp, but they weren't able to actually get the lead top. They weren't able to secure the Herald, and they just haven't been able to snowball at all. Magical, I know that you weren't necessarily expecting a 3-1, but, uh, uh, sorry, a five-game series, but hey, you're, you're excited to be here nonetheless, right? Oh, I mean, it, it's also a reverse sweep potential right now for Maryville, who's not excited Crazy. for this. Ups, it would be an upset because it's one of our provisional teams losing out here. The top one that everyone pegged as being like yeah. a shoo-in, yeah. get back into to the NACL summer, but Maryville being the other big team that everyone was talking about, including myself, uh, through the open qualifiers, you couldn't ask for a better series between these two teams. I know. I mean, uh, one of the expectations for this AOE team was, you know, they're not going to get relegated. They might do like okay in the regular season. They might make yeah. a run in the playoffs, but they are definitely not getting relegated. They yeah. losing the series would be one best of five away from reaching that faith that nobody was expecting out of them. And Maryville making their way all the way from Collegiate here to Tier 2 would be a big feat. But we got to set the table a little bit here for our final Rally Cry halftime show. You know what Magical and Beatdown emotions were like throughout those games, but I've been sitting here in the background as well, getting pretty excited at all the wild moments share. that we've had in these first <laughs> four games. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pick my top four hypest moments, one from each of the four games. And Magical Beatdown, you got to tell me which one of them were the most exciting to you mm -hmm. and which ones were just the, the best overall. Does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I guess we could get started here. Let's show the first clip. It was from game number one. Of course, this is the game that AoE won, uh, but it was pretty close overall. I mean, there was a lot of different back and forth situations. AoE ended up getting that early lead. Uh, but this is where the game really broke open with uh, Quacker on the Olaf. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. I like this one. <laughs> He's just running at them. Like, what can you do? Yeah, this is what I mean. <laughs> he was so far ahead this game, they couldn't kill him. Uh, it's just this, this is the power of that Quacker Olaf that we talked about a lot from him, where he played it a lot in qualifiers. The champ he's real comfortable on. Uh, and you can see why it's earned a lot of bands first rotation. Mm -hmm. Hype level out of 10. <sighs> a solid I'm going to give sense. that one. Solid yeah, six. I was thinking seven because like it's cool, it's hype, but that's like Quacker's job, you know? Right. Just, mm, just when you're fed down. like that too, yeah. You're playing like Varus, yeah. When you're that fed, like Varus dies, ten out of ten times. Yep. That's what's supposed to happen. Yeah, I, I did a little like ooh in my chair as that happened yeah. because I was expecting it to, but it just always feels bad if you're it still hits, at NMU. You know? Yeah, still hits. And a very satisfying end of the game right there for. Quacker. So let's move on to our second clip from game number two. Also a good way to just kind of help everybody real understand how we got to this point. This was one of the wildest things that I've seen in this entire series. Uh, Lynx, of course, was a target throughout the entirety of this fight, uh, but it didn't really matter because everyone kind of died. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a good I, fight. It was a good fight, and also <laughs> I cannot believe that... Um, Dark Wings was able to turn around a kill right there where it's like, ah, he's going to die. And then almost lived and then barely died. It was one of those things where you're just like, okay, another hype moment from this game. Yeah, if we're talking emotions and like hype, that's got to be a nine. Because yeah. I was like the whole time, like my my, my energy is like elevated. I was like, oh my God, he, he clutched it out. He's going to live. Oh my God, he died. Like it was just, it was just so crazy. Yeah, I definitely squirmed around in my chair a little bit watching yeah. that clip. That was, that was a squirmer, for sure. Um, we can move on to game number that three. Uh, yeah, I, that, yeah. I, that, that is what we are calling it, exactly. Okay. Uh, Maryville's first win. Uh, this was a wild fight overall. Niles, specifically, uh, had a really interesting turn, uh, you know, series of events. 
Right. Uh, I, I really like this play because this game was so big for Get Back. You see the yes. damage that he's putting out in all of these team fights and the way that they're able to avoid uh, a lot of that key damage coming through from Lynx, who is in a pretty good spot damage wise overall. It's just kind of what we talked about with Maryville. Really good at skirmishing, really good at team fighting. Comes with all that uh, experience playing together because a lot of this roster have been together for a while. And yeah, that's the Pantheon experience right there. You can't actually run away. Mm. I, I'd probably put that one on like it. That's my seven. I put that as your seven. Was, yeah. I, would, uh, I think I'd have it at a six. It was good. Yeah. It was good. That was a good, five. But it's also like the turnaround, right? It's like you're starting yeah. to get the momentum built up for for Maryfield. It's like, oh, maybe yeah. they could. Yeah. Seeing like the scary Jerry Varicero and and like the initial fight. That was like a four or five. Yeah. But then Niles gears up. Oh, and I take it back. Leaps. I take it back. That it fight the for the context. Lane. For the context of the game, I, because yes. of the context, I'll give it a seven. I take yeah, it back. That, that's why yeah, I'm no, giving no, it no. a seven. That, you're right. You, yeah. I, I just remembered like the the situation and everything. Not magical. You're right. I'll give you that. Yeah. I'm just glad that there's no like unhype moments here in this segment. Let's go to the last game yeah. here, uh, the well, one that we just really bad at this. Ended you're up choosing like the hype moments yeah. of yeah, the yeah, game. Yeah. So it, it would have been it would have been a bad look if I had something a little bit unexciting. But this is where yeah, I think the game really broke open here in game number four. Oh, this yes, yes, the the wombo combo. Yes, I like this. This is so brutal. Again, the whole point for this is that you want to reset as the Aatrox, get the ult stacking, but he was in a bouncy castle going up and down, up and down. And this is when, I'm not even going to lie, watching this, I was like, okay, game five. Wrap it up. <laughs> yep. it, it, it was one of those moments where, like, if you're playing against that too, you're like, okay, what do we oh, do now? God, the <laughs> what do we do the now? mental boom, the gold they picked up, the rift hit. Nah, nah, yep. chalk it up. It's a, That's a remake if it's a script. <laughs> I, I jumped up in my chair watching that because I knew that we'd be right here. You game knew. number five, the last <laughs> Rally Cry halftime show. Uh, we have a couple minutes before the draft for game five begins. So let's talk about some of the narratives that we are looking in for both of these teams as there's just one more map before one of these teams gets uh, promoted into the NACL for the summer split. AOE, of course, won the first two games and now have kind of the momentum working against them. And, and Bita, yeah. you mentioned what kind of in between these games that the top side is something that we're really looking at them to try and improve going forward. Yeah, it's been tough. Uh, it's Without the Olaf, clearly Quacker is uh, struggling a little bit more. Of course, he's been playing collegiate all of last year, but this is the first time he's been trying uh, back at this level here in semi-pro since his days on wildcard black in 2021 This time around when he doesn't have the Olaf, it seems like he's struggling couldn't make the Renekton work Couldn't play on the Gwen as much because Niles always has an answer And I'm really hoping that they try to counter for Quacker because of how important the Rift Herald is for AoE gold and how they play the game So that they get a strong topside matchup so they can fight for the Rift Herald and so that they can snowball into that win that they're hoping for yeah, I think that that would be really good because when we saw Quacker on the Olaf, I mean, that was just a completely different AoE in like the game against Supernova and also the first two games that we saw here. Um, and another matchup that we were really focusing on Magical in the pre-show was this jungle matchup between Winnie, um, between, sorry, between Winnie and Odd Orange. But overall, I think things have been pretty even. It's been the lanes that have really decided a lot of things. Well, I, I got to give credit to both of them, though, because a lot of times it has been them also setting up a lot of these plays. Like we look back to games two and three, Odd Orange was doing a lot to try to set up Niles game one. It was Winnie making sure that Niles was behind and really getting Quacker into a great position. So it's, they're still they are looking for these plays last game. They're Maokai and Wukong, so they're more looking to see if they can get the, uh, the lanes angles. to really join in, the angles and that kind of stuff. So they didn't have quite the, the early game power that we have seen from them throughout the, the qualifiers, for, throughout the promotion tournament, throughout any time we've ever seen these players throughout the entirety of 2023. One more game will determine which will be our first team promoted back into the NACL for the 2023 Summer Split. Game 5, the draft is all ready. It's our last game of the day. Let's make it a good one. Magical and Beatdown, take it away. It's all about how the players play. That's how it works, Grapes, because right now, Maryville, they are on a hot roll right now. Yeah. Two games in a row, one game away from the reverse sweep. They get themselves in the LCS Challengers League for summer and yeah. then knocking down AoE to play another best of five. That would be such a big deal for this Maryville University roster. Already showing that commitment with their program to 
playing such a high level game here in League of Legends. And you can see how much they've improved as a team and how dominant they were throughout the entirety of the qualifiers. It's culminated into this. Even if they lose, they still have a lot to be proud of taking AoE to five games. And you say, ooh, but this is what I expected. I'm surprised AoE went for the blue side pick here. I'm really thinking the key to this one is getting a good matchup for Quacker in the top side. Yeah, but the thing for me is that they fanned away that Rakan. This is something that has been really big for Zyko in these last two games that really has helped set up a lot of these fights alongside uh, Odd Orange and Nile. So seeing that taken off of the board, they also banned away that Grogus themselves, taking that away from Get Back, despite the fact they could first pick it. Makes me kind of wonder, do we see a Varus first picked here for Lynx? It had, no, they're going to yep. take it away. Nope. It has happened Good. before, so I, I, I like where your head right. was at, but it, it wasn't really going to, uh, it's not going to pan out at this point. What the prioritization is going to be interesting to me. Gragas was a big first pick for them. Varus was the consistent first pick or any first pick for Maryville University. And it means that we might see a very different draft compared to what we've had these last couple of games. Mm -hmm. Olaf not available. What oh. does Quacker bring out on the top Nor side? Cassante. That's what I'm looking at. Nor Cassante. Yeah, Cassante would be the one that I would kind of think maybe, but Jace, Jace has been something that they have banned away all series yeah. along. And if they take that, the flexibility, Quacker can play it or Darkwings can play that one mid lane. Very interesting to see from AoE. Gonna keep it 100 magical. That's gotta be a Darkwings pick. He's been playing it a be. little bit towards the end of the Challengers League split there in spring. That's some pretty decent looks on the pick. And with what we've seen some what we have seen from Quacker so far, uh, it, it takes a lot of confidence to pilot a champion like this one and how those last two games are going. I would really like it if that was his pick, but I'm leaning towards mid. And then on the other side, a Scary Jerry getting Zeri again, like he did the last game. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix, right? It worked right. last time. Might as well take it, but you're not going to have Zyko on that Rakan this time around. So Ooh. instead, Annie, something that I talked about before that had gotten through the draft in game four, they're going to grab the flexibility it still provides for the team is there. Really nice. Uh, it's good, too, because this could work for either Zyko or Get Back. We know this mm -hmm. Zeri. Annie is a really good bot lane. You have the double range poke, etc. But also, Get Back has had some really great games on the Annie throughout the qualifiers, even recently. So... Now you have that option for the mid lane. AoE needs to still pick a jungler, needs to still pick an AD carry, and it's looking like Winnie wants Maokai once again. And we kind of said it before, the jungler's been playing fine. Maokai's still a strong champion. Right. It was just, unfortunately, there was that fight that we saw around Rift Herald that the wombo combo worked yeah. perfectly for Maryville. And from there, the, the pedal was to the metal, and it was hard to stop the gravy train. But here, wow. Lynx wow. getting Jinx. And I talked about this at the very beginning of the day. This is a very typical Lynx pick. Lynx right. is someone very well renowned for how he plays around these team fights. That's really yeah. when we've seen Lynx pop off the most and giving something like this hyperscaling Jinx that gives so much the AoE to scale. Okay, and I like it. This is great too that we're seeing this last in this last game. Odd Orange go for the J4. Insta Thresh ban coming through here. Wouldn't be surprised if we even saw a Tom Kench ban. That's another way Skytech could go. But the the Thresh is absolutely a must pick. So you have you remove that way to escape the Cataclysm, and you also remove a, a pretty strong lane duo overall there. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this right now and. I want to talk a little bit about Odd Orange on Jarvan because Leeson yeah. was the pick I was talking about, like his most played in his career. But Jarvan is his second most to played. And one of his highest win rate champions as a jungler yeah. is on Jarvan. This is something, again, very well practiced on. And it's only a few games removed from how many games he's played on Leeson with the Jarvan. This is something that they have a lot that he can do. And it goes into how we've seen Odd Orange like to play for these early games for these dives, for these ganks right off the bat to really help out your lanes get ahead. Wow, it's the Silas ban. That's interesting. I really was expecting the Kennen because surely you just wind Kennen, you keep the Annie Flex pick up, and you have a really good uh, front to back team fight there for the side of Maryville. It's really dangerous leaving that pick up in my eyes. The AOE clearly have a, a plan going in, and we'll see if Maryville actually want to capitalize on that. Uh, well, yeah, we I mean, expected the cannon just... to be taken here from Niles. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of wondering. Uh, it's not a good matchup, but 
I think that Quacker was kind of thinking the Malphite. Is it a Seraphine? Malphite. Is that I, what's happening? I was thinking that Quacker's thinking Malphite. Oh, the Malphite? True. Right, that's kind of what I was thinking. But that was... That it's, was right, it's not... It's, I know, you see why I'm like, that's what they, I think, were thinking. But then the cannon gets locked in, and you're like, oh, now... I mean, what yeah, is the exactly. backup plan? What do we go from here? I'm looking at what they could possibly go no, for. What? I was thinking Orin might be a, a, a fallback, but they go for the Malphite still regardless, purely for that engage. Unless this is uh, my first season of playing ranked and it's Malphite support, and that's going to be Malphite for uh, Quacker. It could be Darkwings. Darkwings could has been be. playing a lot of top laners, a lot of melee champions in the mid lane. I think it would be fine. Tom Kench, much more into yes. that pick. We were kind of hinting at it earlier. Maryville opted to not take it away. And playing into Jarvan Kennen, that's a really big pickup because I think the Bower is going to be the difference between Lynx living or dying in these team fights. And in these team fights, Lynx is going to be the difference maker. Uh, but one thing I love playing against the Tom Kench is Blitzcrank. Yeah. Because if you devour, you just pull him back in and be like, all right, you're not actually escaping here. You're staying in the fight. So, Maryville, they still have a lot of that early game pressure that they can provide with Annie, with Jarvan. Yeah. But there's a lot of team fight potential on the other side for AoE. Far more about making sure they can scale into the game. They could look for a couple skirmishes around level six, but AoE really are indi indexing on having later game fights. I will say the Blitzcrank was really good into the Tom Kench before the rework, where you could devour on a regular ability. It's still good now, but Skytech is still going to be able to get a lot of value on this pick. I'm really worried about the top lane matchup. Malphite. This is quite literally the opposite of what Malphite likes playing yeah. into. As long as Quacker can get through that lane phase and not throw away tons and tons of gold, allowing uh, Niles to stack the paper, it should be fine overall here. You can see they're playing for lane push in that mid lane to, again, give space for Winnie to be more aggressive in the river and the jungle. All right, beat. We're Talk getting ready. It is game five. I know. This is do or die. No longer do the other games even matter. It is all about this final game. One team will mark a spot in the NACL summer split. The other team will have to continue their fight for a spot. But right now, Maryville University, AOE Gold, they will battle for that first spot. That is what is on the line here. Maryville on the cusp of a reverse sweep. Odd Orange actually went to Twitter and said he's never done that before. It would be his first time. and It would be such a big deal for him to be able to do it here. So Maryville can earn their spot, earn the first spot in Challengers League Summer. That's a collegiate program. A collegiate program built to compete with semi-pros. They would then be competing with challenger teams. It's a huge step up and a huge glow up for this entire program and what they've been accomplishing over the years. You talked about the titles they've gotten for themselves throughout collegiate. Well, what better title than to say not only can you take it to toe against the semi-pros in tier three, but you could also do the same in tier two. That's the opportunity, Maryville are fighting for right now. And of course, AOE looking for the same, trying to win their way back after being forced to join this tournament here, being one of the bottom four provisional teams in spring. You see Niles, like that early ward coming through, knowledge of where Winnie is going to be, especially with how Malphite's gonna need some help in this matchup is really important for him and Maryville as a whole. Yeah, you are not gonna have a fun time in this lane if you are Malphite. You have to play incredibly passively, not really look for anything. Your job is to get to level six, and then you'll look for fights elsewhere. <laughs> You're not really ever going to win much. against Kennen. And I like Darkwings looking for this pressure early, too. You want to use that lane bully power as the Jace. So that, again, Darkwings, even though things didn't work out late game, as the Aatrox, he was able to get pushed to get back, open up more opportunities for Winnie. That's going to be super important as Getting Darkwings out of lane to help Winnie help this bot lane is so important. Yes, you have a lot of damage on Darkwings, but it's about Lynx, this Jinx, to carry AoE to the end game, to prevent the reverse sweep here from Maryville. This is why when 
I was talking, I saw the Silas ban. Uh, like, Malphite, you know, rises in priority whenever you ban that away. For sure. It's just but, into the cannon. Uh, it's into the cannon, but I'm I'm going to break down AoE's thought process here. They're sure, sure, sacking sure. the top lane. This is why they drafted the Jinx so early into the game. Their game plan is like game two, and it's everything to build up a Lynx. As long as they can keep Lynx alive and pumping out damage like he did on Aphelios, this is how they win. And this is something that Lynx has done many a time. When they they give him the hyperscaling champions, he always steps up. His positioning is something that has been insanely great. It's always just how he gets out of the lane phase that has been the big factor right. for AoE. Now oh, AoE, actually Odd Orange, losing out on the blue buff. Did get to uh, take Odd Oranges earlier, so it is the one for one. Now we have a, a bit of a meeting here. A little standoff at the Scuttle Crab. Darkwing should be able to get that first move, and he's looking for it. Yeah, but look at Niles. Niles also can move around it to help out. It does seem that Odd Orange is going to forfeit that. Or is he? <laughs> it's a dance right now but between the two of them. There it is. Okay, Odd Orange is going to finally fall back. Yeah, no smite on Winnie just yet. It's got to be a 100% sure. Got to absolutely be positive. That's what he was going for there. And he will be able to just get the rest of his camp. So it's really just net neutral for both of these junglers so far. And the lane's playing out as we expect here. Lynx and Skytech, getting that small lead bot is super big because it allows AoE to be able to, I mean, one, keep that pressure on in the bot side jungle and also contest some of these drakes. And as long as Lynx is getting the attention and stays up as Jinx, AoE are happy. Skytech playing a bit with fire there. I thought Psycho would shoot off a rock, grab at any moment, look for any kind of damage at all. But they are still playing passively. Not really wanting to deal with the damage that can come in from Lynx this early on. Even if it is just a Jinx and Tazeri matchup. Still got to fear a lot that it can happen here when you're pretty squishy yourself, Azeri. Now, we're going to see that bot lane go for the recall here. So no dragon opportunity just... Actually, they canceled the recall. But maybe the call has been made by Winnie that he wants to go for the Scuttlecrab. He wants to go for this Drake. He wants his bot lane to help him with it. Even Could our be. Darkwings is here. Now they got Darkwings nearby too. So Scuttlecrab taken by AoE. And the nerves from both teams for AoE. They're one game away. They've been one game away for the past three games. Getting a spot back to the NACL summer split. While Maryville have bounced back in not just close games, but dominating games three and four. Yeah. And are on the precipice of a reverse sweep against AoE. Neither team are looking to play too aggressively and forfeit that control because everything doesn't matter. If that's how best of fives work, once you get to this fifth game, it's all about this singular game. Right, do you see, even Lynx did back late, stayed for an extra wave to keep Scary Jerry under his turret, but because Jerry is back, means that this dragon will be really easy for Maryville to pick up. That's okay as AoE. You're not really stressing about that, but the question still remains, this Rift Herald on that top side, will AoE be able to actually pick it up? It's been such a crucial part of how they play the game. Ooh, nice oh. knock up there on a Scary Jerry. Getting a little bit of damage traded back and forth, but will be the fall back as mid lane. Gonna be Tibbers thrown down on Dark Wings, mostly to help out clear up this wave. Yeah. Uh, to me, this is Maryville making an answer that they want to look for the play around the Rift Herald, as you talked about. Something that AoE have done a good job at before. But they have to be careful because Winnie is by himself there in the jungle. A nice flash from Zyko nice. to drag back Winnie so they get first blood for Scary Jerry. A nice catch out. It comes from that all in get back used in the mid lane to force Darkwings back to remove its ability to be part of the play. It gives Auto Orange that confidence. Now they get an early kill, that first blood into Scary Jerry's pocket. This Zeri, who you need to be contesting with Jinx in terms of damage in late game. It's a really good start here for Maryville University. And Winnie getting caught out there will give up control, even though. You will be back on the map and could look to gain some vision around the top half of the map. It's going back into the problem that we talked about with the Quacker on Malphite into Kennen. You just cannot get the priority necessary 
to really help out Winnie so they can look for that potential objective. And so far, we see Niles on the top side having that lead here, uh, kind of as we've been seeing ever since Quacker got off of the Olaf. But it's okay this time because he is that tank matchup. He is the Malphite. So it's all right. You can see him indexing for the uh, MR, of course. I'm expecting that force of nature to come through so that it's a little easier for him to deal with the solo landers of Maryville. So we just need to keep that going. You need to just keep having a very quiet, normal laning phase here as AoE on this top side, and it's all right. Rift Herald is still what I have my eyes on. And that's what Maryville are playing around. They're sending up. Look at that. Everyone from Maryville. It's on the top half of the map. They even have Scary Jerry and Zyko in mid lane so they can look for the potential fight. And AoE have done just the same. They've got everyone grouped around eight and a half minutes into the game. And we're looking like we're going to have a team fight. Maybe not. They're actually not contesting this one on the side of Maryville. They're letting that go. Maybe Odd Orange goes for the steal. But they have the information. No. Yes. Yeah, Last go? No. Yeah, too yeah. Okay. They're just going to forfeit it. I'm... Looks like Maryville. Land that one very cautiously, allowing the objective. It would be a 50-50 fight for either team looking for that. Yeah, I got to imagine that they were going for that because they were hoping someone like Darkwing steps, uh, missteps, overextends a little bit or something like that. But I find it interesting that they rotate everyone up and Maryville don't really do anything about it. I don't really like when teams end up doing that, and it does at least give them this opportunity to move into Winnie's jungle, take away the red buff, but all in all, you're chilling if you're AoE, and I'm imagining Rift Herald's going in that bottom lane. Well, AoE, we talked about, this is a composition that wants to scale. They are looking at this game and what the problems were in the previous game. Now, it's the early game would get out of control, and they had no win condition to get back into them in games three and four. Here, they have options. They have game plans that if something happens, if it goes completely sideways, they can still fall back onto the engage of a Malphite Maokai, the late game hyperscaling of a Jinx. Yeah, they, they have a good chance. Get back is low, so they want to fight. Looks like they just want Zyko. They want just any pick, any kill necessary. And they'll take one. That's great. And we see the reset coming through for Lynx. Another big thing that AoE needs to play for. With the all-in, as long as Skytech can keep Lynx safe, and he gets that one reset, that's AoE's key to victory here in these team fights. And that kill means AoE get to push in their lanes. They need to go, they get to go into the jungle, and they're set up just fine for this Rift Herald on the bottom side, giving plates into, you guessed it, Link's Jinx. That's the one they need to continue to funnel this gold into. The whole oh, identity Darkwings. of this composition was to build around Link's, but Darkwings got really close there to getting solo killed by Get Back. Really close, and will have the teleport, and this is actually not too bad, even though he had to flash. Get back doesn't have the alt for this dragon fight. Darkwings has the teleport and can spend his gold and come back. The Hex Drinker coming in. Very, okay. very clutch. Quacker trying to trade back with Niles, but Niles like, okay, what of it? <laughs> it didn't, didn't really what actually force it? me out of it didn't force me out of lane. You don't have TP to get back into the slain, so it's going to be another crash for Niles. And that's really where we're going to have to wait to see for Maryville. This composition, I look at what they have and what they've drafted for themselves. And while it's not quite the early game domination that we've seen in games three and four, their mid game, their skirmishing around then is really what is going to be difficult for AoE to overcome. Look at this, both top laners actually off reset are walking towards the mid lane. They want to fight for this Quacker drink, no but Maryville have already started. Quacker with no ult either, so that's going to be a big Same cooldown with burst. So they have to be careful. They're getting the damage on to get back on the other side, but Niles, he's lightning crashing, and he's flashing, he's dashing, but he had no damage. And Lynx is here, is it enough? one kill. And they've got him excited, they've got the damage, while Scary Jerry tries to turn it around, and he falls to Lynx. It's AoE Lynx carrying the game. And it's AoE winning the fight. You get kills on the Jinx, you get a dragon to your name, and you couldn't have asked for a better engage for AoE gold. And uh, the fact that Link's virtually untouched in the fight as well, we gotta take a look at this. Yeah. And the rocket gets him excited and nobody is even close to him. We talked about it, the Devourer was used onto Darkwings because Link's is nowhere nearby. 
You just need to make sure that slicing Maelstrom, that Cataclysm, is away from Lynx. And as soon as that happens and he's there to free hit, you're chilling as AoE gold. And they got it. You're going to see a big spend come through from Lynx. He's only just backing now. And this Jinx has just been mondo accelerated. There it is. Kraken Slayer completed. The call finished as well. You got Lynx in a perfect position. And it, before it was all slow, steady gameplay. Making sure you farm it up. Get, make sure that Lynx isn't falling behind Zeri. And now you can rely, you can rest on the laurels that Jinx will carry. Now my eyes are set on this next Rift Herald. AoE have been pretty good with prioritizing them so far throughout the series. It's where they found a lot of their success. And they are in that position to do so again. Now you have this 2-0 Jinx who's gotten that first item spike come th coming through. And I gotta say, it's a lot of faith you put into Skytech there. It's very uh, tempting to go for something like the Gale Force to be able to dodge out. I mean, on look at this entire team on Berryville's side, but he goes for the Kraken, he goes for the damage. So it means that as long as Lynx is alive, he's gonna be hurting people. You'd hope that Lynx and Skytech, over the years they played together, you know, through the collegiate scene, through this entire split of AoE, that they'd have the confidence in one another, that they can have that, where it's all on to Skytech and how he's going to play this Tom Kent. And what better way to show that confidence than in game five, with the spot on the line oh, to be the first like team oh, get back in. But the right there, the Devourer yep. on the Lynx to keep him alive, and he flashed away from get back. And guess what? Jinx is still untouched. Huge entrance there from Mouth Fight. And they've got the damage, but they got no damage. Scary, no damage. Scary Jerry. Scary Jerry. It's all on Scary Jerry to take down AoE. And they kept Lynx out of the fight. Even though the ults didn't kill him, he managed to live long enough. Or rather, he was out of the fight long enough. I didn't like this angle right away, but props to Odd Orange. He gets them all with the EQ. And by all, I mean this Jinx. And yeah, he walks away. But look at this. Very little DPS coming through here. You're so worried about all this magic damage coming through from Get Back and Niles. So that even though the setup from Quacker and Winnie was good, not enough damage came through in time to start resetting. Exactly. They never got Jinx to be excited. That was critical. One person dies there. I think the complete fight turns on it to its head for Maryville. That's something to still keep an eye on here. Maryville. Oh. 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 Okay. We're good. Maryville. <laughs> Picked up a lot of gold in that one. It's going to be tough for AoE to walk away with this Rift Herald. It's seeming like they're actually just going to let that go on the side of Maryville. Everyone's reset. No one's looking for a fight. And that's actually a big deal because now you can go for more of these structure takedowns. Maybe not necessarily a dive, but you break open this mid-tier one turret, you're still going to be in a good position to push this waves out and start to set up vision in Maryville's jungle. At the moment, Maryville... After that fight, Scary Jerry got a lot of gold back into his own pockets. We see both carries, Huey's Lynx and Maryville Scary Jerry, are in great positions. And all they need is that second item for both of them. And it's hard to tell who is going to come out ahead, just with how both champions like to play around those spikes. And we'll say, I like the, the force of nature purpose on the top side from Quacker. You can see how he's actually able to trade decently now into Niles. You, can see, you have a lot of MR to be working with here. So he's down 40 CS, but we saw an example in that last team fight of what he's able to do on this now fight. As long as he can make space, as long as Skytech can do the same, that's AoE's way into this one. But on the other side, you see Maryville with all that pressure they earned off that last fight, even with the Rift Herald in AoE's hands, they have control over this bottom side. They're going to be moving in, taking their turn to clear vision and set up for this next Drake. Won't be a soul point, but it will be one step closer to the Infernal Soul. Yeah, I'm, more, I'm just worried about what happens in these fights if nobody touches Scary Jerry. So hard yeah. for AoE to Still actually scary. lock down Zeri. You got to kill the carry Scary Jerry on his Zeri. There we go. I got all the rhymes out. But really, just going to the conversation, it's like, unless you can land that alt from Quacker onto him or you get the Twisted Advance to root Scary Jerry so he can't just dash around the entire fight, you're getting to that point where all he needs, he's almost at that second item spike. Well, Rapid Fire Cannon has been completed for Lynx. 
Scary Jerry's very close to his own. Wow, and we're actually gonna see the Herald not only charge, but the mid-tier one will easily go down. Lynx gets the reset. He's walking up. Yeah. I like that. But watch get back. He has flash, could go for a crazy anti-ult if they're not careful. The ward scared him away though. The AoE were playing that one wisely. They had full vision of Annie. They knew what could have happened. That's why they decided to get the crash. They get out of there, and now they're resetting around this dragon. Okay, remember, Lynx doesn't have flash. It's all on Skytech to protect his AD carry. Especially with Get Back on the hunt. Get him. Trying to see if they can get on top of him. They're just gonna start the Drake. Oh, but they spotted him. They've got the blue trinket then. Oh no, it doesn't. It's nope, barely, they don't know. Barely. They don't notice him. He's all the way over there. But oh, will be secured. AoE. Do you get it? Fairville hadn't got the setup needed to get into this back line. You even see Get Back walking into lane from where he did. They're like, wait, what? Where was he? But this is perfect. AoE, get the dragon, they get to walk away on top of the Herald, crashing into the mid-tier one turret. So they're able to get some gold back into their pockets, reduce the lead to about 1,000, as everybody is just uh, going back to their lane assignment. It is good for AoE, they get to keep dragon stacking, they get to keep things in that 5v5 sort of territory with how important fighting for these dragons is gonna get. And uh, Winnie, unfortunately, couldn't steal their red buff. No, it but then again, that would have just been a consolation prize. It's a mental and gap. On Orange <laughs> getting that, it, it, he spams an emote at him. He's like, yeah, but I'm better. Speaking of mental gaps, we talked about what it takes for Maryville, a team that was down 2-0 in a series, to bounce back and are on the precipice of a reverse sweep here against AoE. Possible. But what about the mental fortitude for AoE? To bounce back after two devastating losses right. as well. And they are on the precipice of getting reverse sweep here. They're fighting back because Quacker he has an ult if he needs to to dash away and flashes out of there. But AoE are making sure this game, this fifth one, is very competitive for that spot. We've already talked about it. Winnie's saying how they really didn't think they'd get down to this tournament. But they're here to prove they belong in Challengers League once more in the summertime. He even talks about, again, we talk about AoE being in the Challengers League and how much we value that kind of experience for players in that coming from Tier 3, coming from that semi-pro level. And I, I watched that because I was hoping to see AoE really show us why they should be in Challengers League again, what they got from that experience. And so far throughout the series, it actually has been pretty good stuff from them. And that's why we really got to compliment Maryville for being able to keep up even after those first two games, which uh, weren't ideal. The games after that have been great. And this one has been just as tightly contested here as we're basically dead even in gold. But if we use the lessons of the series, where the games are close, it's been AOE to take the games. And the games were one-sided, it was Maryville. So here, with that potential for the reverse sweep for Maryville. They have to win when the whole series says that they shouldn't. Is that like your, your weird I can't vote for Maryville logic? Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. We're two it, minutes. It's, hey, hey, it's also, it's fighting against the narrative, the script that has been written as well. You know, you go against- Ah, true. You, you gotta beat the script and that's something that Maryville have done many a times as a collegiate program, yeah. beating the script. And here, the game being so close, 21 minutes into the game, both teams playing very cautiously. Two minutes until the next dragon will spawn. It seems like they're okay with letting the a rift dance for a bit, with neither side fully gaining an advantage. Not at the moment. Even uh, AoE actually have a lead when it comes to turrets being taken. You can see this pressure Quacker has now on this top tier uh, one. But AoE... They're okay with the position they're in right now, trying to keep control over this top side, get it nice and set up, pick up their third turret, and then set up for this dragon in a minute 30, because that could be their sole point, and it could be a really big pickup for them here, as Lynx gonna respectfully stay out of range of the Blitzcrank grab. He's also respectful of Odd Orange, who is wrapping around there, yeah. looking for that potential dive. Hitting the one point of power that AoE have made sure of themselves to build up in links. While Scary Jerry on the other side, it has more flexibility. Doesn't necessarily need that comfort, the, 
the room made by the rest of the team. The Zeri, you know, the dash that you get for yourself can yeah. heal for your own, heal for your own damn self. <laughs> True that. Magical. True that. And then we look at the items. Uh, worth noting, links. I understand why you go for that rapid fire cannon. That extra range is really important considering what you're playing into. It is not the traditional two item spike we expect to see as the Jinx. It's that IE now that we're waiting for where Lynx will, he's kind of online, but he'll be like mega online when we see that one come through. Still has the BF sword to play with and it's AOE who have that first move to the Drake. It's a standoff, Magical. It is, but get back is on the other side and that's gonna be who oh, they put their attention on to. They're going straight for Nice response. Understanding that that is going to be their engaged tool. They've got a lot of damage, but get back. Hides that out perfectly while the rest of the team is on top of Dragon. I like the call though. Let's see the dragon health. Okay, they won't make it in time. It should be finished. Okay, there's gonna be a TP and Witty scaring away the members. That's a flag and drag away. They drag that back in Witty though. That's a lot of damage onto Odd Orange and Zyko. Fight, fight. It doesn't even need to be there because they already got the kill onto the dragon. It's Witty taking low as well, but they're all cutting it back. Cataclysm in the back line. The slicing maelstrom doesn't do enough, and Lynx is alive. Oh, He's nice cutting it back, but they've got the stun. Lynx, they need to take him down. Flag and drag again. And there wow, he goes. they got him. They've got him. Maryville have taken down AoE's one hope. And scary Jerry's wow. quadra kill cements Maryville's lead. And that was such a good angle for AoE to force get back into an unfavorable fight. We said going even favored AoE, but it's Maryville who come out on top in the team fight, being able to make sure their carry is doing the most damage. And we got to see it again from the replay again. This is briefly a five versus four because they force get back away and you can see the damage being done. But at the end of the day, Maryville, they team fight really well, even with the dragon being secured. I right, keep an eye on this jinx keep an eye on odd orange putting so much pressure using the stopwatch to buy space and at the end of the day no one can protect links when they throw literally everything at him they got the stun from get back before he died they they, they then get the flag and drag from odd orange so even when excited it doesn't matter and then scary jerry getting a quadra kill to top it all off for maryville it's Maryville. Now they're the ones who are back in the lead. 2,000 gold up. A third item for Jerry on the Zeri, who is very, very scary. AoE are in a tough spot. What is he it's what? answered, though. It's answered by Lynx. That, before that fight, there was no IE for yeah. Lynx. Now that is in the inventory. The only difference, really, because we have three items versus three items between Scary Jerry and Lynx. But that stopwatch for Scary Jerry could make or break the next fight, despite how good that was from Scary Jerry. Uh, I really like this tweet there from Shivy. Uh, I'm not reading all that, but if you guys want to, like, go ahead. It's pretty funny. I'll give I'll give him that. Skytech, though. Skytech, Probably gotta be not careful. thinking this is funny. Okay. Oh. He's out of there. Okay. But all the while, Maryville still, they gain control but it's only a temporary respite on this map. After getting a quadra kill for uh, Scary Jerry, it is, like you said, it's a 2,000 gold lead, but that's it. That's all they got because they didn't get the dragon. AoE were able to get that. They are the ones in True. sole point. Baron, no Baron for Maryville. Nobody got that either. Neither team have gotten that foothold over the other. I gotta say though, AoE, even though they get that soul point, which is good for them, Maryville are out team fighting them. We keep seeing this happen. And at this point, it's who can enable their carry better. Lately, these last couple of fights, MU have been enabling Scary Jerry really well. I got to give a special credit to Odd Orange, constantly landing those flag and drags, constantly pressuring Lynx and reducing the amount of DPS he's able to put out in these team fights. A lot of being poured now on a quest. Get back. But looking at Getback, he's keeping Lynx completely zoned away. That's why they have to turn, but he had a stopwatch already. They're getting the zap, but that's a timber. He isn't enough first to take down Lynx. No, he's excited now. But the wall makes it so that Lynx cannot get to the rest of the fight where Maryville are going to retreat. We see in a perfect example, when you don't use all that CC, the engage for the Jinx, Lynx is fine. You use 
the Annie ultimate, really that's about it. And because of that kill you got on to get back, AoE claimed their prize, and that's the Baron. This game has been swinging back and forth, Magical, oh. and the Pendulum has swung over to AoE Gold Odd Orange. Wants to try and do something, he's but so low. he's so Gotta low. Gotta be careful, and he even has to flag and drag away, leaving Zyko to die for him as Odd Orange is so low. Chased down, they've got a kill, and Scary Jerry, remember, he's scary, and it's a hairy fight. Contrary to the belief, he's still alive. Oh, Scary Jerry, Jerry died to Link's attack. Links is so low. Niles has the flash. He can't go for this kill. I don't know if they're going to be able to walk away from this one. No. Get back is also here. Oh, man, this is dangerous. Get back has flash too. And he doesn't have Tibbers, but he's got damage. And they're looking to chase down AoE. Waiting it out. Blast cone's over. Where's the flash? Waiting for the dash. They've got the yeah. shutdown. Niles took it with a stun on a Darkwing. Double kill for Niles. And the flash from Darkwing to trade back. No. Triple kill is there for Niles. AoE, they really tried to have their cake and eat it too. I think you just go in for the fight there because you're not going to be back on time for this Drake. But considering when everyone went down, they will not get that Dragon Soul. They will not get the Baron. And it's Maryville who stall it out and managed to keep them off of it. Again, they come out on top. They come out on top. They deny the soul from AoE and beat this game. This game is insane. It is game five. Yeah. You could not ask for a better game between two teams battling for the first spot in the LCS Challengers League. You can see it, this could be an opportunity. No slicing Maelstrom up for Niles, but they are ripping this Baron to shreds. Niles Locked is very lot, low. Though. They've got the slow, Teleport. they look for the engage. TP's there, smite secured for Odd Orange, but the rest of MU have to now escape. Gotta run. Odd Orange could easily get out of there with the flag and drag. Maryville, everyone's going to make it out alive. They get away with the heist. Maybe Niles. Uh, nice. Niles does have movement speed, but he's got to be careful dodging away from the zap. He's got distance he can make. That is one nice thing about Kennen. He's got a back. Is it spotted out? Where is it? Uh, he's at oh, oh, they got him. Just in the nick of time. So that's something that you get back for this one, but you still have a lot of gold that you just picked up on the side of Maryville, and you still have four Baron buffs to be playing with. This has been an incredible scrappy game, Magical, and we just look at how close it is in terms of gold. The big gold difference, really, it's Niles in the top lane. But Quacker, he knows his job. He is an ult bot. And that extra man on the map in favor of AoE means Baron or no Baron, they're the one knocking down a structure. And keeping the gold within 2,000. Very Crazy. gold. They keep thinking they get these advantages. They're getting these leads. And then something happens and AoE are bouncing right back in, keeping this game at dead even between the two squads. And honestly, the fact that this entire lead is basically Niles means the lead doesn't matter. If this is a malfight we're talking about. You have two items working towards three. You're an old bot. You, you just want to get the unstoppable force off, knock up uh, Scary Jerry, take him out of the picture and help secure these team fight wins. So, this is an incredibly close game. Everything is even at this point. You still have Baron to play with, but because AoE have pushed these lanes in so far, we're, we're more than, two, we're almost two minutes into this Baron buff, and nothing has really been gained besides the upfront gold. Nothing will be gained. It is yeah. purely to delay the game up further, Pete, because we look at what's going to be up next. It is almost three minutes until the next dragon spawns. And AoE having another chance at getting themselves the Infernal Soul. That's why you see Maryville focusing on the mid and bot lane. These two lanes so important to allow them to get control over this bottom side. Take away jungle camps, potentially get this tier 2 turret. But it's going to be about the vision set up after they take this turret that matters, Alex. They want to make sure they maintain control on this side of the map and continue denying the Dragon Soul from AoE. It will actually be Maryville's Soul Point as well. Get another incentive for them to pick up this next Dragon. Delaying the game further. That's the big thing right now for both yep. squads. They both got good scaling elements to them. They both have great team fight elements. It's all about who out positions who, which carries get caught first, Lynx or Scary Jerry. And Lynx, he's the one in a little bit more dangerous. Scary Jerry has completed a GA. 
It's tough. That's the fourth item and change coming through here. Lynx and him have been neck and neck so far. Mm -hmm. You do have that opportunity at the second life and extending these team fights is actually not such a bad thing for Maryville University as we are basically just taking turns back and forth, having these teams do a, a little bit of vision clearing, but you see Zyko is running in there. One pick would be catastrophic to AoE's side, and that's another thing we're looking for as AoE try to take their turn and clear out vision. One pick for either side is catastrophic here. With 33 minutes, we're 33 minutes in, and we have no firm leader in this game, and both carries are seven kills deep. Both sides are in a perfect position where if they find a pick, they can close out the game. We couldn't ask for a better way to decide this series here in game five. It's gonna be down to execution at the end of the day. It's gonna be down to how these guys team fight. We've seen both sides come out with big team fight wins. What is it gonna take for either side to come out on top? They're looking for a little bit of damage with Cracker. At this point, in the lane phase, Niles, that's when you bully him. But oh, not I like anymore. This. I really like and this. They're just bulldozing down mid lane. They realize 10 seconds are still up until that dragon spawns. So why yeah. not open the inhibitor? <gasps> Maryville, you've got to answer this now because they are inside of Jinx. That's Niles oh, that's clearing slicing. out the mini what? purely to get rid of that so they don't lose the game. All the while on the other side, Nelfar, they've got Winnie. They've got him locked into the Cataclysm. There goes your smite. They've got a kill. Your TPs are utilized. This is a split fight while the rest of AoE still looking to get towards the rest of the team. Niles has yet so TP tanky. either. And he is, that's gonna be the all engaged. They've got the damage, and one they kill. down. Lynx is, is excited. excited. Lynx is cutting it back. They've got one stasis. They've gotta be careful. Scary Jerry Two oh, and the stasis. Can they get him locked down for long enough? Scary Jerry, cutting it back. Oh, and don't worry. They got the shutdown. AOE will not be denied here. They will get back into the LCS Challengers League. Game five, no reverse sweep for you, Maryville. It's not over yet, Alex, but an incredible fight from AoE. It all starts with the call to go for the inhibitor. Even though they trade Winnie, they still come out on top. The gold they picked up isn't even what matters. It's the dragon soul and three infernal drakes to their name. AoE have now swung the pendulum back in their favor. It was so close, no team had a foothold over the other. No team had advantages until now. AoE with an infernal soul, the 10 and three fully built Jinx and Baron after that. Maryville, the reverse sweep dream is looking like it's about to die, denied by AoE, unless you can pull off a miracle. Unfortunately for Maryville, if they sleep on AoE, they will wake up to a nightmare as the dream might not come to pass. Of course, we're at this point in the game where the gold leads are kind of negligible. But AoE, still, they have that little bit of stat advantage there over in Lynx's pocket. And of course, the stopwatches that we're seeing come through as well. Elixirs are being bought. Alex. This is what it all comes down to in the end. Game five, both these teams so badly want to make it into Challengers League. Maryville for the first time, and AoE looking for that redemption. And we're gonna find out who the first one to make the pass is. It has been a close series. Getting all the way to game five, Maryville dragging this all the way to the full mile. They are so close to the reverse sweep, but that's the thing with Dream. Sometimes they get shattered here as AoE siege down another turret. This should be taken pretty cleanly. Maryville have yet to find an answer. They don't know how to engage these fights, especially because they have to worry about Jinx being excited. Right, and they have this wave coming through with the Baron. They can just use that to pressure the Nexus turrets. They could be looking for the end right here and now. They've taken one Nexus turret. They've got the Zap. A lot of damage. And he's so nearly dead. They but want he it. still survives. They get the root on Otor as he re engages. But the devour, Jinx is alive. You cannot stop her. You cannot stop AoE. As AoE deny the reverse sweep of Maryville. And they are back in the NACL. 
when he said they belonged in Challengers League Magical, and even though it took five games, they proved it here and now. That is our first promotion here in this Challengers League promotion tournament. They take it. What a series, though. Nearly the reverse sweep, but denied by AoE right at the end, and it was fought tooth and nail between the two. We're going to toss it to a break. That was a fun series, but we got an interview lined up for you with the victorious AoE. So make sure to stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody, to the LCS Challengers League Promotion Tournament. I'm here with the victorious bot laner from AoE Gold, Lynx, who put on an absolute clinic in game number five. Lynx, you had some crazy moments throughout the entire series, but specifically in that game five, you locked the Jinx on that first rotation. Is that something where, you know, you're... you're back against against the wall and you tell the coach you know just give, just give me the rock i'm gonna carry this one yeah that's basically how it went it was game five last game and all the games so far have just kind of been decided by team fights so i just wanted to the champion that'd be like just super proficient at that so i was picking either Aphelios or jinx there and then we just locked in jinx because yeah yeah it <laughs> it looks super good. That flash of the Annie ultimate, like, I just kind of lost my mind in my chair. It was a really, really good play. Um, you and uh, Skytech in lane, this series, had a couple of moments where you were maybe struggling a little bit and, and falling behind in CS. And that largely could have been in part to uh, your team playing around different parts of the map. But you actually did come back uh, and really look good in the later portions of those games. What kind of mindset do you kind of take when you do have to kind of play from behind a little bit uh, and make your way back to having an impact later on in the game. Skytech? Or, hello, sorry, hello. Lynx? Can you hear Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you yeah. hear me? Um, oh, you... okay. Yeah, sorry. Could you repeat that question? I didn't hear Yeah, no. I just There's a couple of times where you guys were fighting from behind, especially down towards the bot lane. What is the mentality like uh, when you are facing a deficit and but know that you can still win fights? Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, I think uh, one of our weaknesses as a team is actually playing from behind because we still like to play like we're ahead, force those fights that aren't too favorable. So it's just about controlling that, just making sure that we know we can go for the trade plays, just making sure everyone's on board with that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you and Skytech, of course, have been playing together for a while. Um, I mean, have been a pairing almost since you started your career back in 2020 with Western. What is uh, something that you think the two of you have improved on even in this split, even after playing together for such a long time? I think one thing we worked on a lot as a duo is in lane, uh, like working as a pair and like using your abilities at the same time, like walking at the same time, brushing, stuff like that. I think in the past, we've kind of just played our own game like 1v1 1v1 in the bot lane so yeah we're just trying to work on that a lot this year yeah we definitely see a lot of that here especially throughout the whole course of the season um we saw um a couple of moments where you really were challenged by maryville and a lot of the expectation coming in was that you guys at aoe gold uh would probably make it through the promotion tournament rather confidently uh was that the expectation for you guys as well and what are your overall thoughts about the strength between the provisional teams that are still uh, up for the running and also for some of the qualifier teams that still have the chance to make it? Yeah, so going into today, like we didn't underestimate them at all. We knew that they were good, but we were confident that we'd win. But I think uh, personally, I underestimated their ball lane. I thought they would be worse than they were, and they're actually uh, pretty good. So yeah, just going into it, I think if I just had a bit more of a serious mindset, the games would have gone a little better. But I think this shows that uh, a lot of the NACL teams that are in right now, their spot isn't secured. Because right. we were seed number one and we barely made it. We definitely could have done better. So yeah, I think I think next split NACL would look a lot different, at least for the provisional teams. I have, I've been asking this question on Twitter where I, I'm, I'm trying to pull my, my little follower sphere of how many teams they think are going to make it out of the tournament that were previously still in the NACL. Of course, you're the first one now with AoE. Do you think how many more of your peers are, are going are gonna, to uh, continue to, to join you for summer? I think it'll be only us and TL Faith. Hmm, interesting. So TL Faith is going to make it through over FlyFam tomorrow. That's your, yeah. that's your prediction. Yeah, oh, TL Faith. Got you. Okay, very cool. Well, um, now that you have qualified into the NACL for summer, you can focus on another little tournament that's going on uh, in just a couple of days, and that is CELO. Of course, you're the bot laner for the University of Western Ontario. I have a quick question about the bracket that I'm going to pull up right now. You see here on the top right, 
that uh, year playing against UCSD, and St. Louis University is playing as RPI. Now, if both of you guys win, that'll be the matchup in the round of 16, but Winnie and Skytech are both a part of that school. Uh, who's going to win between between you guys? I think they should really hope that you see uh, UCSD beats us, or else <laughs> might not be looking too hard for them. Are you, you going to turn it on to a, like a, a next level when you're when you're playing against your boys? Yeah, I think when you play against your friends, you try like even harder than like I probably would try harder playing against <laughs> them than today. Uh, should be a good time. I'm excited to see the games uh, in a couple of days. Uh, but last thing before we close things out for the interview is. Obviously, you get to compete another uh, split at this level now that you've qualified back into the NACL. What are some overall goals for you as a player with League of Legends and um, just your overall aspirations as you continue to move forward with your career? Mm -hmm. So I think this split, uh, our team and me individually, we kind of just coasted through. We didn't perform the best. We didn't like show off anything too crazy. So just kind of push past that boundary and like start dominating more players. Yeah, I mean, we saw some domination here, especially in those team fights on the Jinx in Game 5. Links, thanks so much for joining us on the Verizon post-game interview. I'm going to leave the floor to you before we close out the show. Any shout-outs, any last words? Yeah, I just want to shout-out like all the AOE people, all the staff. Everyone's been trying really hard, pulling, like, pulling everything they could to help us just get what we need. All right, there we have it. AOE Gold, your first team back into the NACL for the Summer 2023 split. Links, thank you very much for the interview, and uh, good luck in CeeLo this weekend. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's bring back the casters uh, to wrap up our show for the day. Oh, we see it on our other monitor, but the, oh, the boys, so were, the boys oh, from AOE we came slow. to go that's celebrate so with Link. Oh, that's so sad. It was a really good sight. Uh, unfortunately, you guys didn't get to see it, but thank you yeah. uh, very much to everybody for uh, joining us for the day. Magical, that was not the series score that you predicted. Beatdown, you were correct on your final score at the end of the day, which means that you're just the smartest one of us all. Mm. I am the biggest bird, confirmed. <laughs> and yep. hey, technically, Grapes, if you think about it, us put together, we're equal with them. Yeah? Because you said 3-2, but you said Maryville. I said 3-1, but I said hey, oh. we put it together. I don't we're... think that math checks out, but you're the math guy, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> right? So maybe I'll leave that alone. Yeah, we're me and me and Magical basically did just like we just we did double the amount of, of good as you did on our prediction exactly that, that's the yeah. that's the takeaway at the end of this let's take a look right. at our bracket that has been updated after maryville university fell to aoe gold um we have a lot of more exciting matchups to look forward to starting tomorrow where team tony top plays up against team fish taco that they will be our first new addition to the nacl but beatdown i have a feeling that it's going to be more than just one of these teams that, uh, from the qualifier pool that makes it in it's looking like it. I mean, Maryville really showed us why we thought they were going to be, along with AoE, too easily of the teams that were going to make it through. Even now, they're going to have to play against the winner of Supernova and Last Dance. And I mean, just looking at that, I, I like their chances. I'm going to keep it 100. And overall, I think the most exciting thing is our other upper bracket match tomorrow. Tony Top versus Taco, uh, Team Fish Tacos, excuse me. The fact that these are the two teams who we didn't have as much expectations for. One of them will promote tomorrow. Is so exciting. Magical. Any any matchup that you're looking at as uh, one that you're really excited to watch? I just hope everyone has fun. <laughs> respect. No, no. But, but, Cowardly, but, but, but respect. But okay, real talk. I I'm, I am really excited about all of it. Right. Yeah. I think that Maryville. I expect them to beat whoever wins between Supernova and Last Dance. Oh, they're, actually, oh, they're, actually, that was a mistake. Oh, it's a mistake. A, they're playing against whoever wins Fly Fam and uh, oh. Team Liquid first. Wait, that's actually such an exciting series. I'm oh, really that looking makes forward it, to that, that. That changes yeah. everything. Okay, that changes everything. Because Fly Fam or TLF, I think that's actually going to be a really good matchup against Maryville. Yeah. yeah. It'll be yeah. Tony Top versus Team Fish Taco tomorrow. That, that will true. be a best of five. And then on yeah. Friday, we'll cover our lower bracket best of three to see who will be playing up against either Maryville or the loser of that aforementioned matchup. But that's going to do it for our coverage here today on the LCS Challengers League Promotion Tournament. Day three is wrapped. We had a great time. Our first best of five went the distance, and that is all that we could ask for. Thanks for having me, guys. It was a lot of fun. Good having you. No, great. Oh, we sorry. talked about this last time. You're supposed to thank yourself. <laughs> You're the guest. I can't thank myself. That's just but just just that's do just the bad. That's do it right now. Do it right now. Grapes, thank, thank, you right you now. Grapes, yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank thank you for we, joining us. We appreciate you. Oh, oh my god, you're great. amazing. It was great halftime show. It was good. Yeah.
Thank you very much. I really appreciate being here. The NACL broadcast team has all done a terrific job throughout the split, and it was really great to be a part of it. We're going to be sending a raid over to Captain Flowers himself, probably playing some Skarner hey, no over hit. there on the Probably. Rift. Send him <laughs> some love. Uh, but until then, we'll say so long. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Tomorrow, our last best of five in the upper bracket.